What's up, Outlaw Nation? And welcome to this non-spoiler review for Civil War, this film that is out in theaters now from writer-director Alex Garland. I'm excited to talk about it on this non-spoiler review. But before I do, I just want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. So you see we're dropping all the content we do here. And hit up the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca and see the multiple tiers there with the multiple benefits that you can get when you sign up to be a patron of the outlaw nation all right let's get into this one this is one that i was very much looking forward to you guys who have seen my trailer reactions for civil war you guys know i've got a very strong political point of view if you follow me on social media at all but this one kind of was checking off all those boxes in terms of getting me excited to see a film from an excellent film maker like alex garland now him tackling something that is very topical to what is going on in our world, the idea of a second civil war in this country, which is something that you know a number of people on the political side of things have been clamoring for here both on social media and out in uh, in the world in interviews, protests, all these kinds of things going on in our world. So what would the idea of a modern civil war look like? How would you portray that on film? And what would be the story you tell? So all of that, I was very interested to uh, to see before I went into the theater. I'll give you the quick uh, premise of this one. Basically, there are four people who are journalists who come together as a team. They are plopped in the middle of this civil war that's going on in the country. They're essentially on a mission here to go and find the president in D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. This is a dystopian film. This is a has shades of post-apocalyptic. It has shades of Last of Us. It has shades of Heart of Darkness. It is this idea of these four people coming together and going through these multiple experiences. The road, even Cormac McCarthy's, the road, that adaptation with the Viggo Mortensen. There had, there's all these elements here because they come across some really uh, interesting characters, really interesting people, uh, some scary moments, some harrowing moments, some heartbreaking moments. There, there are uh, tragedies that occur in the movie as well. And there are some really brutal, scary moments that occur as well in the film. Uh, and I thought this was the approach that I thought worked really well. Didn't choose a side overall between the two warring factions, but a lot of people I think are misreading that as, oh, he's not taking a stand one way or the other. Oh no, Alex Garland is taking a stand with the movie and the stand he's taking is this is an anti-war film. When you see all the experiences they go through, whether it's a placid town that seems to be like not wanting to deal with the fact that there's a civil war coming until you realize what's really going on in that town and these numerous people they run into who are uh, indulging in their worser impulses because there's no law and order anymore. So you see the experiences and that Jesse Plemons scene is going to rock a lot of people for sure. So I thought starting off right off the bat with the writing and the directing, Alex Garland, as I'm just intimating now, did a wonderful job directing this film, hammering home what this would look like, what this would feel like, what going through these different cities and through these different situations, both night and day would feel like. Where would you find the moments to kind of blow off some steam, to laugh, to have connections? There's a wonderful scene between Kirsten Dunst and Kaylee Spaney in the in the bleachers of a of a stadium that I thought was great. I thought throughout the writing of this made sense, the pacing of this made sense, uh, and the connections between the characters really worked well, and the chemistry was absolutely there between them. And the way Alex Garland takes you through these moments increases the tension, increases the danger as the film goes along until you get to this incredibly um, harrowing final. A uh, bunch of scenes, final bunch of sequences uh, that uh, will absolutely rattle you because they increase the sound on the gunshots, on the explosions, on the war stuff that is happening near the end of the movie that I think is going to leave a lot of people rattled as they leave the theater. As far as the acting goes, I thought the performance from Kirsten Dunst is yet another phenomenal example of what an incredible talent she has always been. You know, she's an older actress now, and I only say older because we saw her when she was a child in Interview with the Vampire, and so seeing her progress as an actress, seeing her grow, seeing her bring so much level and, and life experience to the work that she does now, I think is fantastic. I also thought uh, Wagner Mora did a really good job as Joel as an actor that I don't know too well, but I thought he did a nice job as a balance with Kirsten Dunst there. Uh, he's much more driven to see the action and excited by the action, but he's also not really strong enough to handle the effects of the action. And we see certain moments where he really breaks down emotionally. I thought Wagner did a great job in, in, in his performance there as well. And Stephen McKinley Henderson as the older newsman who doesn't want to let it go. Sammy, he does really nice work here. And he's a fantastic character actor. Seen him in so many things. 
but he brings this grounded, foundational energy, grandpa energy. He is an important part of the foursome because he's just this kind of guy who has to be near the action, has to find out what's going on. He's a newsman. He's an old school newsman driven by the desire to find out what is happening and cover what is happening during this second civil war. And Kaylee Spaney, I thought was fantastic. She's this young war photographer who idolizes Kirsten Stunt's character of Lee, wants to be like Lee, wants to be a war photographer, and this is her journey. Each of these foursome, they have an arc in the movie, but her arc is really strong as we see her trying to figure out, will she be able to do the things that Lee has done? Kaylee Spaney is one that a lot of people are going to be talking about for many, many years to come as an actress overall. And Nick Offerman is fine for the time that he has and all the other characters that come through. There's not an unbelievable moment that happens with these characters. They're very much invested in the story they're trying to tell here uh, by the end. But overall, and the story, speaking of the story, I thought the story worked really well. Not picking a side, the Civil War is already happening. So wherever you want, whatever you want to feel or whoever you want to gravitate to, that's up to you as the viewer. But I think you can't miss that by the end of this movie, both sides are capable of doing some pretty insensitive, horrific shit, and that the idea of war is what brings out the worst in us. And so it's very strong. It's a very strong anti-war movie, and you can't deny that message, in my opinion, by the time you get to the end of the film. And that is the point. I see some people who are writing articles about how loud the gunfire is. That's the fucking point. They want Alex Garland wants to drive it home to you how scary a second civil war could actually be in our country. How many people would drop the uh, pretense of civil of being civil when they're allowed to have their worser natures satiated by some of their actions. And as for the things that I didn't like about the movie, I do feel that Lee's journey is not as hammered home, is not as connected as strongly in the back half of the movie. So we get to what we get to by the end, and it doesn't feel 100% earned. And I think a couple of things happen at the end of the film that I just didn't like. I felt disappointed by the decision-making that process. It feels, it feels slightly cheesy a couple of things that happen near the end of the movie for me that bother me. But overall, I did enjoy this film, and it's one that I highly recommend for you all. Four Cowboy Hats out of five Cowboy Hats. If you do go see it, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. Hit a like on this video. Share it on your social media. Uh, look for more reviews and uh, reactions from me here on the Outlaw Nation in the future. Take care. Until then. Uh -huh.